We have dumbbells. I reckon if you said to me, you can only have one piece of equipment. You can only have a pull-up bar or a handstand push-up station or a kettlebell or a dumbbell. I reckon the dumbbell. I reckon I'd choose a dumbbell. Flipping raining out there again, two days in a row. Luckily I built this cubby house for my daughter so I can uh, come up here, talk to the camera, I can still film myself through the window up here, so ideal, you know. So today we're doing a little workout for quality, not for time. There's no set time that I have to start a new round either. So I'm gonna do 12 dumbbell snatches. My elbow's really hurting still when I do the eccentric loading, like if I catch the, uh, the dumbbell mid-air, but it's okay if I go to the ground. So if I reset on the ground and then pull from the ground, that seems to be okay, so I'm going to be alternating from the ground rather than mid-air. Just 12 reps, 6 on each arm. Then I want to try some bar muscle-ups, although it is raining so the bar's pretty slippery. I might not do those. Again, I can't string them together. The elbow just hurts too much, but I can do singles and then jump down and do another single. So I'm going to do three singles, and then I'm going to try three strict handstand push-ups. My strict handstand push-ups are horrendous. I'm not existing, but uh, I might be able to squeeze out three, so... 12, 3, 3. Let's see how we go. Maybe do five rounds, seven rounds, ten rounds. Who knows? You so what? You can't kill my confidence. I think I'm the man. Tally all the f I ever gave on my head. Lately, I've been living like I can't take a loss. They wanna help me. That's what made me a boss. You can't kill my confidence. I think I'm the man. We don't give a f That's what they don't understand. I'm back again like flu season. I broke records while losing. And I'm coming now, my roof leaving. Don't give a f I I don't care. Uh, did the f by my lonesome. No wonder now I'm on one. No shortcuts on that long run. All I really want is my share. Uh, get on my god, my told him it's nothing. In the discussion, f all them feelings I throw on my pain on percussion. This disgusting. I hear I'm bragging about that they did and it's not moving. Alright, keep Friends, if you haven't noticed, I love beautiful visuals. I love things looking good, whether it's video or photo, whether it's done on my professional cameras or my phone, I really like to make the image look as schmick as possible. And today, I thought why not show you guys how I edit my photos on my phone. Maybe that'll be helpful for you. Whether you're a photographer or not, whether you care about this stuff or not, I think we all appreciate good photos and I think we'd all like to uh, improve our photos, whether it's just for our own personal use or whether we're putting it out to the world to see. Um, it's fun and it's a, it's a good little skill to have, I think, in this day and age, especially if you have a business um, or if you're having to present stuff to the world for whatever reason, it's nice to know how to make it look pretty. So today I want to teach you how to edit photos using your phone and using an app called Lightroom Mobile. Now Lightroom is pretty much the the go-to photo editing software um, for most photographers. There are other ones out there, but Lightroom is probably the most used or the most well-known, and they do a mobile app as well. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Majority of photographers, including myself, we use what's called a preset. A preset is something that someone's create, a look, a look or a feel that someone's created, and we're basically copying those settings onto our photo. So whether we've created that preset ourselves or whether we've purchased it from someone else, I'm personally not the kind of photographer, I'm not at that level where I'm creating my own presets. Um, I view myself more as a videographer who can also take photos. Now there are some amazing people out there that create their own presets and that's amazing. But for me, I purchase my presets and I use other people's presets 
as my starting point. So I apply those presets to my photo and then I'll make some tweaks from there, which I'll show you today, some simple tweaks. So go ahead and download the Lightroom mobile app. I believe it's now free on the App Store. So go ahead and purchase that to start with. Then we've got to find you a preset or a preset pack. There are hundreds of thousands of these online. There are free ones that are ones you can pay for. And I will say that the way that they present on the person's photos is not always going to be the way it presents on your photos. Often these presets are displayed in beautiful locations with amazing looking people and just exciting uh, environments. And uh, they're taken by really high end cameras. So it can be a bit hit and miss with these presets. I've downloaded ones that I thought was going to look amazing and they look crap. And I've downloaded ones that I thought was going to be average and they turned out amazing. So some presets look really good, others not so much. It really depends on where you take the photo, what environment uh, their photo was taken in when they applied their preset. So there are a few little variants, but I think that's just part of the process. You accumulate a bunch of presets and you find kind of your favorite five to 10 and you learn over time which presets work for which situation, which work for outdoor, which work for indoors. So there's two ways to get these presets on your phone on the Lightroom mobile app. Number one, you can find presets that are already designed for the mobile app and they are called DNG files, DNG files. That's what you're gonna to need to put it or to install it onto the mobile app. Now the other way you could do it if you've already used Lightroom on a desktop before, you can actually export any photo that you've edited as a DNG. So if you have some presets already on your Lightroom software on your desktop computer or your laptop, you can go ahead and just export a photo that you love the look of and make sure you export it as a DNG. And then you can drop that photo to your phone and use it the same way as you would a preset that was uh, already made for mobile. But for this video, we'll just focus on how to install the DNG file to Lightroom Mobile. Now, once you've found your preset online, you found your mobile preset, when you download it, it's gonna come in a zipped file. And that can be a bit tricky to unzip on a mobile phone. There are apps you can download to unzip files but I just find it so much easier to uh, actually download it on my computer and then just drop that file to my phone. So it's much easier to unzip things without having to use third-party apps. So go ahead and find yourself a nice looking mobile preset online, download it on your computer, and then just drop that DNG file to your phone. Now, once you've dropped that DNG file to your phone and you open the photo app, it's probably gonna come up like this, just a white or a gray square with no information. But the information is there, your phone just doesn't know how to display that DNG file. But within Lightroom Mobile, it will display properly. So let's open up Lightroom Mobile. Now, once you've opened up Lightroom Mobile, you wanna go under Albums and add a new album called Presets. I've already got one there called Presets, but you can just simply hit the plus button there, create a new album, and then type in Presets. Now, uh, I'm gonna open up mine here. And you'll see there's a bunch of presets under there already. So this is where we're gonna add the new DNG file. So again, within that album, within that presets album you've got there, you're gonna go ahead and hit the little plus button, the plus uh, on top of the photo there. You're gonna go to your camera roll and just add that DNG file that you just dropped to your phone from your computer. Uh, and you'll see that there, top left-hand corner, DNG. I'll add that there. And as soon as you add it, It'll come up and uh, it's called, this one here is called Contiki. So you'll see in the top left hand corner there, you've got a dude walking into the ocean. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that DNG file. Then in the top right hand corner, there's three little dots in a circle, I'll click that. And I will select Create Preset. I'm gonna go ahead and just name that Contiki, that's what it's called. Done. Hit the, uh, the tick in the top right hand corner. And now that preset has been created. So now I'll go back to the main menu. I'm going to go ahead and select a photo. So very top button there, all photos. I'll go ahead and select a photo of myself here. And now if I scroll down the bottom menu all the way to the right, hit presets. It's going to bring up all my presets and I should be able to find Contiki in here if it all worked. So I'll go down, look for Contiki. There it is. Select Contiki and it adds the preset to my photo. So you'll see here if I hit the screen and hold down, that's what the photo used to look like. If I let go, it adds the preset. So that is how I start. I start with a preset and then from here, I'll go ahead and make my changes. So I'll just show you some of the main things that I change. So first of all, the crop. So I'm gonna post it on my story. So I'll just crop it to a nine by 16 and I'll move myself to the center. So that's the first thing I'll do there. And then I'll just look at my skin normally. If my skin is kind of shiny and overexposed, I'll just hit the light button and just bring the exposure down a bit to bring my skin to a kind of a normal space where it's not shiny. 
Cool. Now from here, um, perhaps I might add a bit of saturation if I feel like the image is a bit flat or is lacking in color. I'll just hit the color option there, go down to saturation and just add a bit of saturation. If you go too far, you're going to look very weird. If you go the other way, it's going to be black and white. So just a bit of saturation added there. And then lastly, guys, I'll just go show you my third adjustment here. All the way to the far left is selective. I'll hit selective, hit the plus, and I'll select the circle. Put a circle around myself like that. And then what you can do here is you can invert that circle. So you can go ahead and just hit the invert button. And it's only going to now affect the change on the red outside the circle. So I'll go ahead and just bring the uh, exposure down, make it a bit darker around me. So I stand out and I'm quite happy with that. So that's my finished product there. If I click the click and hold, that's what it looked like before. That's what it looks like now. So I literally just added the preset, changed the exposure. Um, I added some saturation, just a little bit. And then I used that kind of selective tool to, uh, to make myself the focus point by making everything around me dark. You could also, um, instead of inverting that selective mask, you can also just leave it as it was and make me brighter. So uh, I don't know why, I just like making the outside darker. Now I'm going to go ahead and export my photo. And to finish, I'll just show you one more thing that I often like to put on my photos. And that is using an app called Lens Distortions. And you can put things like sun flares in your photos here. So I'll go ahead and select that photo I just edited. And I'm going to add a little sun flare here. So I'll just find a spot where I think it works. Now, I think the sun was actually on the other side here, but that seems to work okay right there. So I'll export that. Now, obviously be careful here. If you have shadows running one way, you can't put the sun on the opposite side. It's got to be in the right place to make sense on the photo because people's eyes will just know that there's something wrong there. In this case, there's no shadows as such. So I'm just putting the, the sun behind me. So it looks like the sun is setting. And uh, I reckon that is looking pretty crisp. So on the screen now, you can see the before and after and literally did that edit. I could do that edit in two or three minutes. So very, very handy skill to have. So I hope that's interesting to someone out there. Again, make sure you have the DNG file, you have the Lightroom mobile app, and you should be able to make magic happen with a few buttons clicked. And uh, that is my little process for doing quick mobile edits on the run. Obviously, I go through a full a uh, comprehensive edit for clients or you know photos that I really care about that I want to spend more time on the desktop but for the most part for just quick family photos on the run that's the way to do it and uh, I look forward to seeing you up your game on social if you do end up using that little process if you've never used Lightroom or presets before uh, please go ahead and tag me in, in the photos that you end up editing I'd love to see them Guys, down in the description, I'm going to link up one of the preset packs that I use. A good friend of mine, Devin Gray, he created a pack for uh, Lightroom Mobile. I think it's about four different uh, presets there. I use them pretty much every single day. And then I'll, I'll link a few other ones that I like. Um, a lot of them I've used the desktop version of Lightroom to then create mobile versions. So, uh, But Devin's one in particular is for mobile and I love it. So if you find any good ones that you love or that you know of, let me know. Other than that guys, stay sexy, keep roaring love, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you create. See you soon. Mwah.